G'day everyone. If you've watched our previous videos, you've probably noticed that we cook a lot on the Pro-Q here. It's one of our favorite barbecues and we love cooking on it, so we thought we might just take you through it and how we look to set it up. The Pro-Q here is what we call a bullet smoker, and it's a great versatile bit of kit. You can use it for low and slow cooking, and you can also use it for fast stuff as well, so it is really quite versatile in that regard. Now, it's reasonably priced as well. For one of these, you're sort of looking around that seven, eight, nine hundred dollar range, which, when you're buying a barbecue or a smoker, is a very reasonable price. Okay, and now there are other types of bullet smokers out there on the market as well. You've got the Fornetto, uh, which is very similar to the Pro Q, and also Weber have their range of bullet smokers as well, the Weber Smoky Mountain. But today, obviously, we're going to be going through the Pro Q here. So let's break it down and have a bit of a look. Okay, so you can see when I took it apart there, it's quite a modular barbecue, which is pretty cool. It gives you a few options of what you can do. Right down the bottom here, we've got our basket, and this is where our coals go in. You'll see, as with a lot of bullet smokers, we've got one, two, three air inlet vents there. And it's really cool. That gives us some nice fine control over our temperature while we're cooking. Right, so you would have seen we've got some multiple sections here. And what we can do is we can just cook with one section. We can just put this one grate on here and we're directly over the coals. This would be good maybe if you were cooking a pork belly and you wanted to get a bit of height to get your crackle, but you still wanted to be direct over heat. Now, if you want to keep stacking it up and put the other section back on, you can leave this grate in here and you can double stack it so you're cooking something on both levels, which is great. Now, another thing the ProQ has is a water pan and this just sits under the first grate here. Now you've got a couple of options with the pan here. One is to run it like a water pan, which is fine, but it does act a bit like a heat sink. So it can take a lot of time and energy to heat that volume of water up. And another thing with the water pan too, is that throughout a long cook, you'll find the water evaporates. So you're gonna to need to top it up. Another alternative is to use sand. So you don't need to top up anything that's not gonna evaporate, but again, it can be a bit of a heat sink. It's a big mass. It's gonna take some time and energy to heat that up. Uh, another option in the way that I like to run it is just to wrap my water pan in tin foil and leave it empty. And what that does is it acts as a deflector, so my meat isn't directly above my heat source, the heat is coming up the sides. And it also is a bit of a temperature regulator as well, just keeps that temperature even as it comes up. The reason I wrap it in tin foil is because throughout a cook, you get a bit of dripping and things that fall down, and it saves me cleaning the pan. I can just screw up the tin foil and chuck it out and rewrap it again when I need to. One other thing you'll notice with this section too is we've got a door at the front here. We can open this up and we can check our coals or if we want to chuck some lumps in there for a bit of smoke, we can do that as well. Right, and now we've got our second and top section. And you can see we've got another grate on here. So we can cook some protein up here and also something down the bottom as well, if you so desire. You'll also see there's another door in the front here, so if you did want to top up your water pan or check whatever you're cooking in there, you've got that option. Now, another cool feature of these ProQs is you'll see both on this top and bottom level, you've got these little rubber grommets here. And what those are for, for putting in your temperature probes. Uh, so those inlets for your probes are really handy if you're running something small and straight like this, your competition probe or a pit probe. Um, they can be a bit more tricky if you're running something a bit more like this with your 90 degree bend in it. But still a great little feature, saves you having to shut your lid on your cable or having to drop your probes through your vent. And lastly our lid. And like most barbecues, we've got a single vent in the top and a temperature gauge. Now the Pro-Qs do come with their factory Pro-Q temperature gauge. In this instance, I've swapped it out for a town troop. I just find that they're a bit more accurate, but they fit perfectly in the same slot. So you can pick them up from NZ Barbecue Supplies. If you have a barbecue similar, that uh, might be worth looking at. All right, so let's have a little bit of a look at how we might set it up for a cook. Okay, so when we're running these barbecues, we generally use the minion method. So what that means is that we pour in some unlit coals in the bottom, we make a little hole or divot in the middle and we pour some lit coals in there. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay. 
Right, so I've pulled some unlit charcoal in the bottom here, and you can see I've got it around the outside and divoted a little hole out in the middle where I can pour some lit coals. So the idea is that I'm going to pour some lit coals into the middle here, about half a chimney full, and it's all evenly going to burn out in each direction and make it me a good long cook. Now I'm using Kingsford charcoal, and I actually like to measure how much I'm putting in. So I'll put in two chimney loads of unlit coal in the bottom there. So what you might find is that you might do a cook one week, and then the next week you do another cook and you're wondering why maybe you're not getting as long a cook or it's not getting as hot as it was. And there's many variances that can affect barbecue and how you cook. I figure if I can take one of them away, then that's just going to help me out a little bit. Now another thing you could do is you could place some chunks of your favourite smoking wood around here as well, just to give you a bit of extra smoky flavour when you're cooking. Right, at this point we'll be pouring our hot coals in the bottom, and like I said, about half a chimney will do. And then we can put the top of our barbecue on. Right, so normally when I set these up, I'm sort of looking at about 275 degrees Fahrenheit as a cook temperature. Now, the way that I treat my vents, uh, I treat my top vent as my coarse control, and my bottom vents as my fine control. Meaning if I want to make big wholesale changes, I'll use my top vent, and if I want to make smaller changes, I'll use my bottom vents. As a general rule, I very rarely touch this, or leave it wide open, um, unless it really gets away on me. Okay, so when I'm bringing it up to temperature, what I like to do is fully open one of the bottom vents, and the one that I'll open up is the one that is opposite the top vent, because we want that cross airflow coming up. So we've got a vent down here that I'll open for you while it's coming up to temperature. And I'll leave it like that till I get up to around about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'll close it about halfway, and then that should bring me up to around about 275 degrees. Now I do let this sit for about an hour before I put anything on, just to allow all those coals to get lit, get rid of any bad white smoke, and have that nice gentle blue smoke coming out the top there. Okay, so just to summarise that, I'm using the Kingsford charcoal with two full chimneys of unlit charcoal on the bottom, and half a chimney of lit charcoal that I put in the bottom there as well. And with my top vent fully open and my opposite bottom vent one half open, that'll sit me around that 275 degree Fahrenheit. Another key thing to note is that you don't want to be fighting your barbecue. Every barbecue has its own little sweet spot. And in fact, I've got a couple of these and they do operate slightly differently. So if your barbecue likes to sit at 10 degrees higher or 10 degrees lower of your desired temperature, don't worry about it. That's where it wants to be, let it go. Otherwise, you're just not going to enjoy your cook. Right, so hopefully you picked up something today about the Pro-Q. If you've got one, you'll know they're great bits of kit. And if you're on the market for the barbecue, I do recommend these things. They are really great and they cover all your bases. We'll see you next time.